You are watching Deck Pass Live. And look at that shot, a nice cool pool, nice and calm, no wind at all. If you've been watching us in the first two days of, he, of the Tier Pro Swim Series here in Mesa, Arizona, you know it's been windy, lots of gusts up to 40 miles an hour, and the racers had to deal with a lot of adversity with that. But it's been nice and calm. Look at that, no surf at the, at the finish here. It's a beautiful day here in Mesa, Arizona. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings, and we are here. The third day of prelims has just finished. We got one more night of finals. And as I've told you, as you can see, the Skyline Aquatic Center is just so beautiful. And I, we're just so happy to have the Pro Swim Series here. It's been here since 2013, and a lot of famous people have been here who have gone on to win Olympic gold medals. The pool records are just so fast, and the names are just so recognizable. Michael Phelps, Ryan Lochte, Katie Ledecky, Katinka Hosu, the name goes on and on and on. These are not easy records to break, and I think a lot of people are here this weekend to try to break some of them. They fall a little short, but we might get to see some of those records falling tonight. All right, so let's just real quick talk about last night. A lot of great swims, a lot of the hundreds we had, um, as you see there, so you got in the Eight, 400, or sorry, the 200 freestyle. Uh, it was 800, 800 freestyle, excuse me. The, we had Leah Smith and Zane Grothy taking the wins there in the 100 backstroke, Olivia Smoliga and Ryan Murphy. They were both Olympians in those events. The 100 butterfly, or sorry, not the 100 butterfly, 200 butterfly, Haley Flickener, an Olympic finalist in that event. Chase Kalish broadening his horizons and doing very well on that was a pretty easy winner in that event. 100 breaststroke, Molly Hannes and Michael Andrew, pretty dominant wins there. And then we had the 100 freestyles, Mallory Comerford, the up and coming star in that event, former American record holder, and Nathan Adrian, Mr. Reliable, taking the win there. And then the 200 IMs, Melanie Margalis and Chase Kalish, big time winners there. Chase had a big double there. Melanie Margalis also had a good double. So it's all about the racing. And if you're a pro swimmer, it's about getting a little money too to put in your pocket, pay for the rent, pay for pay for groceries. So it was a really good night in finals last night. And we're gonna talk about a little bit about what to expect tonight. Very interesting swimming tonight. We're gonna to have the 400 freestyle and the 50s of butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke, and freestyle. So let's just recap what happened in prelims. Leah Smith, pretty pretty much far ahead of Hallie Flickener. 411.98 to Hallie's 413.36. We'll see if, if Leah can get uh, how far under 410 she's gonna push it tonight. It's her only race. She had a tough triple last night. But she only has one race, so she's going to put it all on the line there. And then in the men's 400 freestyle, Zane Grothy and Marwan El Kamash and Jordan Wilamowski, I think those three are really going to be separating themselves tonight. Jordan, of course, um, an Olympian in the 1500 and the 10K. Zane Grothy, the new American record holders in the short course distance events. And Marwan El Kamash has been really doing well. Um, GCU, Grand Canyon University, has been having a great meet here. And so Marwan will go in as a top qualifier. We'll see how he does tonight. So among all the 50s that are going to be swum tonight, the 50 freestyles, I think, are the highlights. And we're going to look at the women's and we see Margot Gear three tenths ahead of Mallory Comerford and Madison Kennedy and you see that top eight they're going to be in a special shootout tonight they're going to be um, three elim two elimination rounds they're going to eliminate down to the top two finishers in the semifinals they'll go on to swim in the big two-person shootout final for a lot of cash so I'm sure all, all these ladies are really looking forward to that and then let's look at the men big big names in this top eight Michael Andrew Michael Chadwick Nathan, Nathan Adrian you see Cullen Jones there this top eight is going to be really intense and getting the, that top two for the I guess you can call it the super final it's not going to be easy and I know all these guys are really going to put everything they have into it just to make sure they can get into that top two so you don't want to miss that. Rowdy Gaines and Ted Robinson are going to have all that on NBCSN tonight. All right, so here's the Pro Swim Series leaderboard. As you see, Chase Kalish still holding on to an eight-point lead. He's actually grown his lead over Zane Grothy. And Ryan Murphy creeping up there after having some good swims in the 100 backstroke and the 200 backstroke. Taylor Ruck, after a phenomenal meet in Atlanta, still doing very well. She's not here, but Melanie Margalis kind of creeping up on her. And another Georgia teammate, Hallie Flickener, moving up. And Olivia Smoliga. So we got three Bulldogs in second, third, and fourth on the women's side. So, speaking of Bulldogs, I got one here joining me on Deck Pass Live. It's Nick Fink, it who's been swimming very well in the breaststroke events here. Mesa, how are you doing, Nick? Great. Uh, we uh, 
<clears throat> we had a pretty hard training block coming into this meet, so uh, I'm just happy to be here and swimming fast. Just to get in and just race, that's really all it's about. Yep, and the sunshine. And the sunshine, yeah. So let's just talk about that really quick. Thursday, you had the 200 breaststroke. Mm -hmm. Friday, you had the 100 breaststroke. So tell people what it's like to swim breaststroke into the wind. Um, yeah, it's it's not easy. Uh, you definitely notice it in the splits. Uh, it's It's harder going down on your first and third 50s and it's not as easy as you think with the wind coming back. Right. So um, I don't know. It's it's something that everyone faces in the race. Um, so it's um, I don't know. <laughs> it's it's hard, it's but tough. it's, it's you do, doable. You do what yeah. you can. You definitely do what you can. Yep. So um, you just talked about you had a hard training block, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the you know there's a big pro team down at Georgia right now, mm -hmm. and and you guys are really performing very well. So what's it like to have that squad to really kind of push each other, men and women? Yeah, it's great. Um, it's great, especially when the college season was going on. Um, we had a big enough group to where, uh, you know, you were training with people every day. You weren't training by yourself at all. And um, we got a lot of big personalities on that squad. Yeah. So it's, you know, even just coming in and, and hearing everyone talk and, and joke around. It's, it's a lot of fun. So who, who, who makes you laugh the most during swim practice? Uh, during practice? Ooh. Um, Chase, when Chase can get going, he, he can be pretty funny. Um, he, he probably will, will make me laugh the most. Yeah, I could, I could see that. He's a pretty <laughs> funny guy. Everybody looks at him when he's racing, and he's got the serious face on. But yeah. I've seen him when he's away, and it's, <laughs> yep. it's a totally different person. That's, that's cool. So I was just looking at your Twitter account, and I saw that um, your coach, Harvey Humphreys, mm -hmm. gave you the banana trophy. You've got to explain what <laughs> is the banana trophy. Well, it's... Uh, it um it means you're you win the B final so you're top banana if you win the B final and um, you know at these kind of meets you have to you have to be ready to swim every race every prelims every finals and uh, I didn't quite get it done in the morning for the hunter breast so um, and the two I am I was ninth in both so uh, my goal is just to come in and, and be top banana and, and win my heats and uh, see what I could do so he he. Uh, he gave me two banana trophies with my name and the events on it. Yeah, so I guess these aren't these aren't awards you really want to get. No, that well, <laughs> they're uh, they're fun to eat. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. And they help for post race recovery, right? Yep, yep. definitely. Eat your bananas, guys. <laughs> All right. So just really quick, this nationals is very important. It's qualifying for Pan Packs this year, mm -hmm. World Championships next year. So does that kind of add a little bit layer of not pressure but motivation regarding how you're training this year? Um, definitely. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's hard not to think about it, um, knowing that this summer decides you know what you're going to be doing, where you're going to be going next year. Um, but uh, I try not to think too much about it, just because um, you know I want to swim fast every meet I go to, and that includes this nationals. I want to swim as fast as I can, regardless of what happens next summer. So um, you know, I try not to think too far ahead. Take it one step at a time. But um, it is it is something that all the swimmers really know. So. Yeah. So we're going to have um, a little bit later in the show your swim squad captain, Lenny Kraselberg. Um, so what's it like to be able to swim on that? And, you know, you got the 50 breaststroke tonight, which is mm -hmm. going to be some big points for the squad if you score well. It's also a shootout. So you're going to be potentially swimming the 50 breaststroke three times. Mm -hmm. You know, talk about your how you get in your mindset for that. Well, uh, it's just like a practice almost. Like you're doing a bunch of fast swims in practice, and um, our coach has us doing a lot of 50s back-to-back all the time so um, you know don't think too much about um, you know being fast on one but being fast on on all of them and um, yeah I mean just uh, scoring points for the swim squad is is the main goal for the 50 so yeah so right now late Kraselberg squad is two points ahead of, of the Coglin squad so yep, not the, a mistake the pressure is on you yep. Well, yep. <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be really exciting to see how you guys handle those, those uh, shootouts tonight. So, Nick, thank you very much for joining us today. Good luck in your 50 tonight and, and the rest of the season. We'll see you in Irvine. Thank you very much. All right. So that's Nick Fink. Watch him in the 50 breast shootouts tonight. Don't go anywhere. His team captain, Lenny Kraselberg, be with us right after this break.
Again, a beautiful Skyline Aquatic Skinner here in Mesa, Arizona, just east of Phoenix. Thank you guys for coming back at Deck Pass Live. So you see back there, way back there in the tower, towering figure of that water slide, every competitor has been itching to be on that after they race. And look at that. Allison Schmidt posted this on Instagram, going down the slide with Zach Pody. I'm sure she just has fun. I, I don't think that was only one time that she went down the slide. I think a lot of these people have been going down it like three, four times until their coach is like, we got to go. So... It's really fun, and, and um, so joining us now, as I said, four-time Olympic champion, Lenny Kraselberg. Lenny, it's an honor to have you on the show. Thank you, I'm very excited to be here. So before we talk about the swim squads, um, just give us kind of an update on kind of what you've been up to these days. Yeah, it's actually, it's been a while since I, I retired back in 2006. Uh, pretty much last 12 years I've been running uh, Learn to Swim Academies. Uh, been fortunate enough to have opportunity to have them not just in LA, but uh, branch out to different parts of the country. So it's been really special for me to have uh, an ability to transition in this way and still stay in the sport, give back, but yet also you know be able to make a living out of it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think staying involved in the sport I think is really a good way to give back which you know swimming is giving you so much and and um, I think we all look for ways to give back so I think you know the swim academy being a part of the swim squad I think is is, is a really good way to do that so when you got the call to say Lenny would you like to head up a swim squad um, what was going through your mind when they asked? Well, I was very excited. Uh, Lindsay uh, called me and uh, talked to me about it, and it was exciting because I think it brings a, a, a different element, an additional element to, to our sport and uh, to trying to gain the popularity that we continue to grow. Mm -hmm. So to be able uh, to be asked to do it and obviously having Caitlin and uh, uh, Natalie and Jason also be the captains, it was a tremendous honor, and yeah. I jumped on it. Well, immediately. and you know all, all of them. I mean, they were all on the 2000-2004 Olympic team, so you guys are all familiar with each other. Is there any kind of trash talking that's been going on these past few months about? Well, Jason's on the team. I mean, one of the captains, obviously, there's trash talking <laughs> going on, but he's not obviously producing results-wise so far. Uh, but it, obviously, it's a, it's a nice, uh, you know, friendly rivalry in a sense, and we're all excited to be part of it and continue to promote the sport and continue to highlight uh, this current generation of incredible swimmers that USA Swimming has. Right. So let's take a look at the swimmers that are on your team. You've got a really good list. Chase Kalish right there, obviously a big performer. Kelsey Worrell, now Dahlia. Look at that. Number three, you got Katie Ledecky. I'm sure you're just anxious to get her in the pool and racing for you. And Matt Grievers and Olivia Smoliga, your top draft picks. But, you know, you've got a lot of others who have been really doing well. You got the people that are here. You got Abby Weitzel, Kelsey Dahlia, and um, Bria Larson. I mean, you, you've really got a good squad there. I've been really happy and actually fortunate to have a squad like this. As you mentioned, I mean, Katie has not even swam, yeah. and I'm, I'm leading. So I'm really mm -hmm. excited. Hopefully she'll start swimming the next couple of meets and uh, get some additional points f uh, for our squad. But it's really good. Obviously, I'm somewhat of a sprint heavy. and yeah. uh, But a meet like this here in Mesa where there's a lot of sprints, it really helps me. And I I'm excited to continue to build some additional points. So what do you think about how these guys are performing so far in Mesa? I think they're swimming well. I mean, our team, uh, my team is obviously swimming pretty well. Uh, Chase has been so consistent throughout uh, this whole uh, series this year. And, um, you know, Kelsey's doing very well. Um, I know Matt swam well in, in Austin and is doing well here. So Olivia has been incredible and very consistent. So I'm really excited. I've, I've been really lucky to have these guys having the consistency all throughout the season so far. Yeah, I'm. I'm I can't imagine if when you got the opportunity to pick Katie, you were like, "That's it, game over." That's no, no, no other, no other, no other persons need it. Yeah, you're right. I mean, obviously, the most dominant uh, swimmer in the world today. I, I could say most dominant athlete in the world today. You can definitely argue that. But again, I think uh, when you're you, when you're doing a fantasy uh, thing like this, you got to pick and choose. And obviously, considering that Katie was still a collegiate swimmer and swimming for Stanford, you knew she wasn't going to be uh, swimming the first couple of meets. And obviously, I had an opportunity to pick her, I think, in round three. So, I mean, fortunate she was on the board. And, <laughs> I, you know, hopefully it's going to be guaranteed 20 points every time she swims. You hope so. <laughs> you hope so. So just you were talking about Lezak and, and trash talking and everything, and he's not doing very well. I, I understand that you kind of offered 
to be his backstroker because he didn't pick any backstrokers for his squad and he turned you down with that what's up with that yeah because my uh, appearance fee was too expensive for <laughs> him so he didn't want to pay me uh no yeah again i think he talked quite a bit before the draft about you know how he's going to dominate uh obviously he overthought i guess a little bit because he yeah. has no, no backstroker swimming here absolutely so this is not just you know to get the fans excited and get you know points and everything there's actually a very worthy cause behind all this so the the winner at the end of the Pro Swim Series, and then they take points from Nationals as well, the squad that gets the most points gets $10,000 that's donated to your charity, and you have chosen the Jesse Reese Foundation. Talk about um, your thoughts behind picking that. Yeah, this was just, first of all, having an opportunity to be one of the captains and then having an opportunity to play uh, and be able to ra get, hopefully win money for Jesse Reese Foundation. Uh, Nigu never ever give up. It's a, it's a special organization, something I've been involved for past about five, six years now, and this organization works with children that are affected by cancer. And the uh, primary thing is that we bring joy jars uh, to the hospitals where kids are, have to stay there while they're going through their treatments. So it's incredibly powerful organization and impact you make on kids and the smile you put on their faces. So really, it's an honor for me to be a part of it. It's obviously an honor to be able to, to play for something, for an organization like this and hopefully be able to win it because I know it's going to impact so many young lives. Yeah, their motto, never, ever give up. I, I really like that motto. I think it's an incredible motto. I think it can, it can be applied in every walk of life, yep. obviously. Absolutely. So if you want to learn more about the Jesse Reese Foundation, make sure you go to negu.org, be able to donate, learn more, find out where you can get um, information on that. So before we go, I understand there's something dealing with the hundred hundreds that you were just involved in recently. You got to tell me about that. Yes, uh, so I've actually been swimming pretty consistently with Masters last couple of years, and I swim at UCLA Masters, and once a year they do a workout, 100 yeah. uh, short course yards, so I decided to ch challenge myself this year and do it. So uh, it was good. I was actually pretty happy that I did it. I uh, swam probably about 75 of them backstroke. Wow. Uh, but uh, it was good, you know, you, you, I, I think you do masters, so yeah. you know how uh, it's just gratifying to get a good workout in and just feel so good about yourself. So obviously the times are a lot slower than it used to be for me, but uh, nonetheless, just to do 10K, I think the longest I've ever done in terms of a one single workout. Yeah, because I was going to say, I'm sure Coach Salem never gave you anything like that. <laughs> No, no, definitely not Coach Sarah, nor uh, Coach Schubert either. Yeah. So uh, it was a little bit shorter, but it was good, though. It was uh, really nice to be a part of it and do something like this and also be able to stay in shape so I can do a, uh, a workout that long. Absolutely. You got. You can't just jump in and do 100 hundreds. Yeah. Well, Lenny, thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations on the way your team's performing. We're going to be obviously looking at this throughout the next three Pro Swim Series meets and then th on through Nationals. Thank you. All right, my pleasure. Thank you. All right, so that's going to do it for tonight. today's Deck Pass live and we just want to remind you once more do not miss tonight's deck pass live it's our last show of this series in mesa you're going to want to be here right at seven o'clock because we're going to show you the men's mystery medley and i got to tell you it's the most fun race that they have concocted here for the pro swim series eight guys are going to come out they're going to have a board in front of them they're going to wipe away take away a little card and they're going to see that they have to swim the 200 IM in a totally different order than butterfly backstroke breaststroke and freestyle. It's going to be so much fun to watch. I'm going to be I'm just so happy to be able to bring that to you with Ted and Rowdy. You're going to be doing the call. So be sure again, join us at seven o'clock Eastern and we'll bring that to you and we'll interview the winner and we'll wrap it up here from Mesa. So for everybody here at USA Swimming, or excuse me, seven Pacific, I said seven Eastern, seven Pacific, 10 Eastern. So be sure to join us for, for that. So for everybody here at USA Swimming, thank you guys so much for joining Deck Packs Live. I'm Jeff Cummings and we'll see you next time.